brothers and sisters, after Moses, the man of God, died, God had Moses' successor Joshua become the leader of the Israelites. Guided by Joshua, the second generation began their march towards Canaan in earnest. As the two spies spied on the city of Jericho, which was like a gateway to Canaan, they found that its inhabitants were fearing Israel, whom God was with. With high morale, they marched towards Jericho, but on their way to Jericho, they were blocked by Jordan River, which was overflowing and had storm currents. Yet, the people did not relent or become dismayed by this. The second generation had been well trained with the trials of faith, so they ably overcame all obstacles with spiritual faith by which they relied on Almighty God. The same goes for you. If you successfully pass your trials and develop spiritual faith, you can overcome temptations much more easily than you did as a novice believer. Unlike before, you can also have your heart's wish fulfilled quickly by faith. You receive answers quickly. Like this, you can spiritually grow and improve through trials. As you change yourself through trials, you gain faith by which you can believe from your heart. And as you are able to display God-pleasing deeds according to that faith, then you can be said to have true faith. Hopefully, in the last session and today, as we watch how the Israelites did, just because they they witnessed power, that doesn't mean they had true faith. But through trials, through the situations that didn't agree with their thoughts, they remembered God's power and did not complain or grumble. And they tried to do what pleased God. As they show such... If you show such... Demonstrate such deeds, that's faith. Without trials, we may live a comfortable life. That's what human beings are like. But... Through trials, we we make make up our mind to do things, challenge ourselves, and as we overcome our situation, that becomes our own faith. As we pray, we get strengthened and overcome our situation. That's why trials are a blessing. Hopefully, this message will lead you will lead you to indeed possess both faith of closing the Jordan and destroying Jericho. Also, I ask that you will learn what kind of deeds of faith you have to demonstrate for God's work and actually put them into action as His competent worker. Because Father God has said He he will do it, He will do, but there are things we have to do. Even though He said He would do, We ha- still, we have to ask and we have to show obedience. Only then can we see His work. Brothers and sisters, for the Israelites to enter Canaan, they first needed to conquer the city of Jericho. To do so, they had to cross the Jordan lying ahead of them. Today, the Jordan River has narrowed significantly, so it's only 30 meters wide on the average. The width of the river had significantly narrowed. But back in Joshua's time, the river was quite wide. They're just saying that time changes everything. Uh, Moreover, the Israelites crossed the Jordan River about 3,500 years ago. So the scale of the river at its time shouldn't be compared to that of today's Jordan. At the time, with many steep slopes, Jordan had quite strong currents. The Bible says, for the Jordan overflows all of its banks all the days of harvest. By the time they crossed the Jordan, it was the season when people harvest wheat and barley. At the time, it was also the rainy season. The snow on the mountains melted and flowed down into the river, raising the water level to the highest point of the year. Even a knee-deep stream along a valley, when it gets suddenly flooded, it can sweep away people or livestock. As we can see from the news reports, those rivers 
we can, you know, swim across, but when it gets flooded, we, we may get swept away. Moreover, while the water overflowed and had a strong current, it was never easy for those millions of people to cross it, carrying heavy loads. There were millions in number. They also had heavy loads. They were carrying heavy loads. So this was not an easy task. Then God presented a very simple solution for them. It was not to make ships or bridges. Had they had to make ships or bridges, can you imagine how many of them were needed to transport all the elderly, little children, women, and all their loads to the other side? Even if they had managed to do so, even if they had managed to do that, the soldiers of Jericho would have never stood still. But that wasn't, that wasn't God's will, God's way. But it was to have the priests to carry the ark of the Lord and w- walk into the Jordan River. If they did so, God said that the waters of the Jordan would be cut off and that the waters would stand in one hip. According to our common sense, how could we make a river with a strong current stop flowing just by stepping on it? It's never possible. Suppose the first generation was told to do it. There was no way they did that obediently. They must have never... They must have grumbled. They must have said, Do you want us to be swept away and die? Even their chiefs would have complained and instigated the people saying, Moses led us out of Egypt through the rough wilderness and then here. But now he's trying to kill us in the Jordan River. He's telling us to step into the river with the heavy loads and the ark. It's like telling us to be drowned. Then, the people would have been instigated and grumbled together. I'm talking about the first generation. But, the people who are following Joshua, I mean, the second generation, never uttered a word of complaint or doubt. Because God even split the big Red Sea, they believed that making that overflowing river stop shouldn't be a problem at all. According to God's word delivered by Joshua, the priests obeyed immediately and stepped into the flowing river carrying the ark of the Lord. As soon as the priests' feet were dipped in the water, things happened exactly as God promised. The water from upstream stopped flowing and piled up in a hip a great distance away, while the water of the other side all flowed down to the salt sea, revealing the bottom of the river. While the priests were standing in the middle of the Jordan, the water was completely cut off, and the Israelites quickly crossed the river. As soon as the priests walked out of the river, after they, all, of them walked, all of the priests walked out of the water, As they came out of the water, the water piled up, started flowing, so the water level returned to its previous level. As the Israelites witnessed God's word delivered by Joshua fulfilled and His amazing power manifested, they put their trust in Joshua all the more firmly. The Bible says, On that day the Lord exalted Joshua in the sight of all Israel so that they revealed him just as they had revered Moses all the days of his life. You can learn an important fact. Father God showed such a work. Without obedience, such a work would never have been possible. Father God didn't stop the river flow of the river first and then told them to cross it. While the f- river was flowing still, Father God told them, told the priests to go into that river. 
and, and people, people were united in one heart. The priests who were carrying the ark obeyed. And the hearts of the people were the same. They were united in obedience. And as their representatives, the priests showed obedience. We have to show the deeds of step, step, setting our foot in the river. Some people say, if Father God stopped the flow of the Jordan, if God first stopped the split the Red Sea, then I can cross it. But the situation was diff- uh, so different. When Father God split the Red Sea, the people's faith was weak. That's why Father God first split the Red Sea and made them cross the sea. But for the second generation, they had gone through a lot of trials and they had to conquer Canaan by faith. So Father God wanted them to show faith. That was their, uh, it was like, like, like their assignment from God. With the, with the fleshly thoughts, You know, they were carrying the heavy ark. With fleshly thoughts, they must have swept away by the river. Father God said He would answer us, He would heal us, He would give us New Jerusalem. But as we are blocked by the obstacles, we are stuck where we are standing and we are afraid to take one step forward. With fleshly thoughts, we cannot obey. Then, Father God's covenant could not be fulfilled for us. We have to obey. We have to set our foot forward. We have to stretch out our hand. We have to raise our hand. You have to show such deeds so that you can see God's work. I mean, actually, the splitting of the vast Red Sea, which happened about 40 years earlier, was much much more marvelous than this. Despite having watched such an astonishing work, the first generation distrusted and resented God to the end. But the second generation trusted God and obeyed as they were told. God hoped that not just the Israelites who witnessed the stopping of the fall of the Jordan, but their offspring would remember His work forever and remain steadfast in fearing God. So God commanded something. He ordered them to take 12 stones out of the middle of the Jordan where the priests were standing and set them up. It was to commemorate the stopping of the flow of the Jordan. Joshua had them set up the 12 stones at Gilgar. God intended for the Israelites to remember what He, the Almighty One, did for them whenever they saw the 12 stones and fear and obey Him forever. The same goes for us. Father God shows, manifests great and amazing works. Father God doesn't just want us to rejoice temporarily and then forget. Father God tells us never to forget. You know, the Sunday, one of the Sunday school teachers confessed as we witnessed the history works manifest at Mom Min and, you know, they talked about the aurora, aurora lights and That's, he said that that's what helped him to hold fast to his faith. But there are people who were healed of uh, incurable diseases and they received resolution of their problems and they had a happy family. They stopped looking to the world and they began to l- run towards heaven. But as their situation changed, they were quick to forget the grace they received. Father God doesn't want us to do so. Father God tells us never to do so. From now on, we have to engrave what we've experienced on our heart. And we should never forget. And whenever we face hardships, we have to remind ourselves of those experiences. And, you know, we we have to remind ourselves, Father God, the God of the shepherd, And He he promised us to... I hope you, all of you, hold fast to that promise and then you will see God's work not ceasing. But if you just rejoice 
only when the Father God's work is manifested and then forget quickly, then in times of trouble, you cannot experience His answers and blessings. That's because you have a change of heart. You have to repent of this. You have to inscribe the works, all His works in our heart. Through this astounding power, God again confirmed to the whole world that He was with Israel. The Bible says, Now it came about when all the kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan to the west and all the kings of the Canaanites who were by the sea heard how the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan before the sons of Israel until they had crossed, that their hearts melted and there were... There was no spirit in them any longer because of the sons of Israel. As said, the Canaanites trembled in fear after they heard about what God did in the Jordan River. They heard rumors about it and they trembled in fear. God's work does not is not shown only to His people, but to the whole world. Father God reveals His glory throughout the world. Some people may say, Father God's glory is is not shown right now, but Father God is preparing to... And Father God wants us to show the evidence And Father God wants us to show fruit as the fruit of the shepherd. As we do so, we will see God's glory revealed all over the world. Father God conducts His power. Father God doesn't want only His people to rejoice. You know, Father God chose His people, Israel. Father God is glorified when His people obey Him. And through that, rumors spread to the Gentiles. Father God is glorified, and those Gentiles who have a good heart, that's why Father God manifested power. You know, Father God manifested His power and my men so that His glory may be spread to all the world. That's what He has done. In the end time, this is the end time. Even worldly people confess so. This is, we are going, our Lord is sure to come back. The afterlife surely exists. When people's, when a person's life is over, if he didn't know about heaven and hell, they will end up in hell. Father God doesn't let them unattended just because they are unbelievers. But Father God, Let them see His works. You know, Father God, let the Israelites cross the Jordan and then rumors spread to the Gentiles. So, the the harlot Rahab, the same way, Father God manifests His work through my men and He will do even amazing and more wonderful works. And we have to prepare ourselves with prayer for that time. And the Canaanites trembled in fear after they heard about what God did for them. The morale among Israelites were boosted, and they felt like they could take over Jericho at once. Yet, instead of ordering them to take, attack Jericho, God commanded them to do something. It was to circumcise themselves. It felt like they could attack the city at once, but Father God command, before that, Father God commanded them to do something. It was to circumcise themselves. With men's thoughts, before they were about to have a big battle, they should have been ordered to check their weapons or brace themselves for a battle. But Father God conducted, uh, t- told them to conduct circumcision. There was a special reason. It was to confirm once again His covenant with Abraham to instruct them on the ways to overcome spiritual battles by faith and to notify them that seeing God's work requires circumcision of their heart, namely sanctification. It is God who fights for them. But for God to fight for them, they had to make preparation. They needed spiritual preparation because Father God had chosen them. He told them to fulfill 
what they had to do. And Father God reminded them that they needed to... uh, This isn't just a message for Israel, but it carries the secrets to receiving blessings in our families, workplaces, and businesses, and giving glory to God. So please pay attention. In Genesis chapter 17 is a scene where God spoke to Abraham, the father of faith, and promised to give his offspring the land of Canaan. In doing so, God instructed the Israelites to make sure to do something for the fulfillment of His covenant. He said, You are my chosen ones. And and He said they had to do something for the fulfillment of that promise. It was circumcision. He said that when you do Uh, God said, This is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and your descendants after you. Every male among you shall be circumcised. If they hadn't hadn't been circumcised, Father God would have said, You have broken the promise on your part. But because they by circumcising themselves, God acknowledged that they were His people. From then on, all male babies of Israel were circumcised in eight days after birth, and the circumcision served as the sign that they were the people of God. But since the the Exodus, they hadn't been able to circumcise themselves wandering in the wilderness. They circumcised themselves the last time right before they left Egypt, uh, which means all people born after that, namely all males under 40 years of age, hadn't been circumcised. Before the battle for the conquest of Canaan began in earnest, God had all male babies, uh, I mean, God had all males circumcised to once again confirm His covenant. But that was never an easy task. Circumcision involves pain, so they, they they wouldn't be able to move around freely for a few days. In the book of Genesis, Jacob's sons took advantage of this to avenge their sister. They said like, we get circumcised according to God's law. So if we are also circumcised, we will give you our sister. After they had all males of Shechem circumcised, while the people were in pain, they attacked and killed all of them. Even though the males of Shechem were much greater in number than Jacob's sons, because they couldn't move, they were so helpless, unable to fight back at all. Such an incident is recorded in the Bible. So, if the Israelites got circumcised, they would have difficulty moving, and the entire congregation would be in serious danger, because all all males had to be circumcised. They They had to go to the war. If the enemies attacked them, the whole congregation would be in serious danger. Moreover, having crossed the Jordan already, the Israelites were already within the Gentiles' boundaries. They were not located far away. They were just right in front of the Canaanites. The citizens of Jericho who were close by were standing guard against Israel day and night. If they had involved men's thoughts, they would have naturally disobeyed and complained. But, having faith, the Israelites obeyed without an excuse. As they were protected by God until their wounds completely healed, the enemies couldn't even come near them. There are times God commands something difficult or impossible to obey with men's thoughts. To show us great works or give us great blessings, He demands from us spiritual, true faith. It feels like it would be easy for us to walk the more easier path. You know, it it must have been easier if they circumcised in advance. Then they wouldn't have worry. But when they were right in front of their enemies, Father God commanded them to circumcise themselves. It 
it must have felt like the situation was getting more difficult. But Father God worked so that the enemies couldn't come near them. They, people could have wondered, why Father God, how come Father God tell us to go a more difficult, difficult path? It's because Father God wants us to show true faith. Those who have spiritual faith, if we have spiritual faith, the physical people would may wonder with fleshly thoughts, why, how come Father God tell us to go easier? But we, if you lack faith if you involve your fleshly thoughts you are filled with concerns and you end up confessing negatively and as a result you go through trials God tells us how useless our fleshly thoughts if we rely on Without trial, it cannot... If we just do... As we, in the face of trial and hardships, we begin to rely on God wholly. And as Father God, we, as we experience Father God working for us, we come closer and closer to God. That's why Father God have us walk a more difficult path At this time, we shouldn't say it's difficult, but instead we have to say it doesn't matter if Father God helps us. We have to march in such a way by faith. To make us realize that nothing is impossible with Him, God commands something impossible with man's thoughts. As we obey, He resolves it with His power, helping us have greater faith and blessing us. You know, m a m i n has also gone through such experiences many times. Our, we have gone through difficult or tough times. In doing so, we could improve ourselves. Holding overseas crusades, as we held overseas crusades, as senior pastor said, Father God sent us to countries where the situation was difficult. You know, when the senior pastor went to overseas crusades, there were great fruits. So, if senior pastor had visited the very same country again, more and more people would have gathered, and there would have been more reports. But senior pastor, but Father God doesn't guide us. in an easy path, but Father God guides us in a more difficult path. Father God sent us to countries where there were threats of terror, terrorist attacks. Some country even threatened to inflict a fine or imprisonment. Many times God commanded what seemed totally impossible or very difficult. If we disobeyed thinking that it was impossible, we would have never experienced God's miracle or brought down His power. But every time, s i n a Pastor boldly marched on with faith, saying Amen, and God so wonderfully showed us a great reversal. Thus, in the face of any kind of trouble, we should only rely on and obey God, making it into a blessing and an opportunity to grow our faith. When we are peaceful, it's good to be peaceful, When we are peaceful, we go, but in troubles, we improve ourselves spiritually. This is the time we are doing so. And we have to remember that Father God led His people that way. Father, you know, Father God didn't just let us only through easy way. When we overcome the trials, when we When s e n a pastor obeyed and marched on in faith in holding crusades, Father God and His power also grew greater and greater. When you, are, when you find yourself standing before Jordan, make, it, make that into an opportunity to grow your faith. 
But if you grumble and complain, you can never set your foot in the river and you are stuck where you are. You cannot march forward. You shouldn't live your Christian life that way. If you are stuck where you are, you are backsliding. You are not staying where you are. We have to check whether you are spiritually growing, whether you are relying on God and tr- try to figure out God's will. You have to check yourself in light of this. Then, why did God command the circumcision in such a critical situation where they were having a battle? Earlier, Father God led them to rely on Him only before they reached the Jericho I mean Father God could have commanded it Father God could have commanded the circumcision before they reached Jericho or crossed the Jordan Father God however didn't lead them in such a comfortable way. While they were right before attacking Jericho, Father God commanded circumcision. It was to notify us as well as the Israel of how to win victory in a spiritual battle. This applies to us as well. The Bible says, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. From a physical perspective, the conquest of Canaan must have been seen as a battle between different peoples. But actually, there were spiritual battles between good spirits and evil spirits trying to dishonor God. Battles in the spiritual realm determine the outcome of the physical battles. The battles in the spiritual realm, how, according to how the battles in, in the spiritual realm go, people in the physical world may win a victory. You know, if you win a spiritual The the more important thing is the spiritual battle. To win spiritual battle is circumcision of the heart. Battle belongs to the Lord, as the Bible says. This was the case when David defeated the big Philistine warrior Goliath. The Bible says, all that... and that all this assembly may know that the Lord does not deliver by sword or by spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and He will give you into our hands. This little boy boldly confessed so. While adults, while the generals of Israel trembled in fear, Even while the Philistine warrior Goliath uh, blasphemed God, the other Israelites stood still, but David burned with anger. He was upset, and he relied on God. This, physically, this little boy David was no match with Goliath in terms of height and strength. Suppose they fought with physical strength and technique. Even if there had been 10 Davids, 20 dozens of Davids, they couldn't have beaten a single Goliath. Goliath was a mighty man with a spear and a sword. He was fully armed with a shield, a helmet, and armor. Only a small portion of his body, like nose and, and his eyes, were exposed. because he was wearing a helmet, but still, his eyes were exposed, only a small portion of his face. With men's thoughts, how could a strike, how could a strike from this little boy hurt such a heavily armed man? But as a man proffered before God, David won the spiritual battle. Because God was on David's side, David was winning in the spiritual battle. That's why, 
I mean, God was on David's side, so he was a, David was able to knock down the big man with a single stone. A stone thrown by David, whom God was with, flew and sunk right into Goliath's vital point. So no matter how big he was, he couldn't help but fall down. With our God, such a work happened. So if we win a spiritual battle, such impossible thing can happen. Also, in Moses' time, Israel battled with the Amalekites. The Bible says of this, when Moses held his hand up, then Israel prevailed, and when he let his hand down, Amalek prevailed. When Moses prayed with his hand up, I mean, Moses was not, himself was not fighting in the battle. He was just praying. When he prayed with his hand held up, the Israelites who were fighting won. But when his hands were lowered, the Amalekites won. As Aaron, realizing this, Aaron and Hur took a stone, had Moses sit on it, and held his hand up on both sides until the battle was over. So, until Joshua defeated Amalek and gained victory with the people, Moses' arm wasn't lowered. Eventually, the battle resulted in Israel's victory. The secret of their victory was Moses' prayer. When Moses prayed, heavenly angels and hosts got strengthened to fight. They provided strength to Joshua and his people. That's how they won. But when Moses didn't, the angels and hosts lost strength. As a result, the people lost. I'm talking about two incidents, but other than these two incidents, in many parts of the Bible, we find records, we find records saying that the outcome of a physical battle is determined by, not by flesh and blood, but by spiritual battle. We should know that even though we don't physically fight as soldiers, all affairs in our everyday life are related to the battles in the spiritual realm. Back in the uh, Wednesday service, we heard about We have to buy the sword by selling our cloak. Our life in the world is the spiritual battle. So in order to win the battle, we should have the spiritual sword. The same goes to our life. We are like in a battle. We have to make impossible situation into possible situation. this applies to us the same way. We are living in the world controlled by the enemy devil. In your workplace, in your schools, in your... wherever you are in the world. And let's talk about our ill feelings as well. We don't want to hate people. We want to love anyone. We, We are praying for love for others but we hear as we hear about a person gossiping about myself we the Satan instigates us and we burn with anger even though we prayed about not hating anyone we find ourselves burning with ill feelings that means we lose our spiritual battle every moment in our life we faced enemy devil's skim, enemy devil's plot. So we have to stay awake and win victory. Let me take an example. In your family, a common example is there are people who severely persecute believers in their family or workplace. From a physical perspective, they themselves are the ones who persecute. But spiritually, evil spirits incite them incite them to distress the believers. When the persecuted ones please God and get empowered by God, they, let's say, he prays fervently and he stays thankful and joyful, then he can be, receive strength from above and with help from heavenly angels and hosts, they cause the evil spirits to lose strength. As a result, persecutors relent. 
and the situation gets reversed. We have experienced this many times through overseas crusades. But fortunately, a pastor visited a country where we would have a crusade. Many times, the enemy devil severely interfered. Why? Because it's because father, his power was great. So Satan instiga- instigated people in politics and, and many other areas. They try to hinder s i n a pastor from visiting their country. But because Sina, as s i n a pastor proclaimed this message, many people would come back to the Lord. That's why they civilly interfered. But once, as Sina, after s i n a pastor prayed with faith, We also prayed together with faith. We also prayed to win the spiritual battle to please God. And s i n a Pastor marched only in, on faith. Once he got off the plane and stepped onto the land, the interfering forces significantly weakened. After a day or two, they became silent. As he overcame the fierce spiritual battle with faith and prayer, The evil evil spirits lost their strength as the camp of the enemy devil destroyed. He won victory and glorified God. All of us are the witnesses. In the face of a bleak and difficult reality, as we also act by faith to the end, we can break the camp of the enemy devil no matter how strong it is, gain victory and glorify God. Thus, if only we beat the enemy devil and bring down God's work, no matter what our spiritual reality is like, it is reversed immediately and we can be answered according to our prayer. We have to apply this in our life well. I don't mean to say if there are persecutors, you have to say, drive away, be driven away, enemy devil and Satan. I'm not saying this. let's say someone gives you a hard time you have to find a way to win the spiritual battle you have to figure out a way to win the battle against Jericho facing Joshua and the people was also a spiritual battle in which God intervened we can confirm this from the fact that the captain of the hot the captain of the host of God appeared before Joshua as he was by the city of Jericho. They had marched in faith. They had crossed the Jordan. They stepped onto the Jordan River and walked through the dry land. That was the march of faith. And then they were about to attack and conquer the city of Jericho. That was the spiritual battle. And before that spiritual battle, Father God sent the captain of of his host to Joshua. And there was something they needed to do to win the spiritual battle. It was the purity of heart. It's important that we study the Word, but we arm ourselves with the Word. It's not Just, just reciting many verses, but it is to make our hearts purified. It is to spiritually make bread of the Word. Only then can we win the spiritual battle. This was why God commanded circumcision to Israel that had crossed the Jordan. Physically, circumcision is merely casting off, I mean, cutting off a piece of skin. But spiritually, it signifies removing of the four skins of one's heart. The Bible says, Circumcise yourselves to the Lord and remove the foreskins of your heart, men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Here, to remove the foreskins of your heart is to circumcise your heart. Namely, it is to remove sins and evil and purify yourself by keeping the commandments. You know, back in the Old Testament time, the Holy Spirit hadn't come yet. So it was difficult to circumcise one's heart by man's strength. For this reason, God accepted physical circumcision as circumcision of the heart. But in fact, what God really wanted from them was to really circumcise their heart. Before they crossed the Jordan, Joshua commanded them, Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord Lord will do wonders among you. When the captain of the host of God appeared 
He also said, Remove your sandals from your feet. These are the words commanding sanctification. Before God fulfilled His covenant, He commanded circumcision, once again requiring them to sanctify themselves. The Bible says, Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God, and whatever we ask, we receive from Him, because we keep His commandments and do the things that are pleasing in His sight. As said, sanctification closely relates to our receiving various spiritual and physical blessings. Under God's permission, anything can happen instantly. But before that, it is important that we first circumcise our heart and gain confidence by keeping the commandments so that God can work for us. It is important. This is the right procedures for us to indeed enter Canaan and to beautifully fulfill our missions regarding the Grand Sanctuary and the world evangelization. The We are also waiting for the completion of the power of recreation. We want to glorify God with the shepherd. To have this answered, we have to finish adorning ourselves as his bride, just as the Israelites circumcised themselves. While s e n i pastor was with us, we thought we were circumcising ourselves. But actually, we were in the space of the shepherd. You know, the first generation received blessing by on account of Moses, and our change and our faith was also like this. We have to confess this. It's not that we did good. It's not that we we had good faith. Do you have the trust in shepherd? Because Father God showed us great power, we did so. Just like the the hollowed Rahab, can you say that you can trust God just just as the hollowed Rahab? If you, after some, some people said that even if you try to circumcise yourself, you have to check yourself. After their circumcision, there were great tensions between Israel and Jericho, like the calm before the storm. Because they heard that the Israelites had crossed the overflowing river and they were about to attack and they were calm and they were circumcising themselves Uh, they had no idea they they were circumcised themselves and they were trembling in fear because they were so quiet the Bible says now Jericho was tightly shut because the sons of Israel no one went out and no one came in Jericho put itself on the highest alert. It looked like they they left no room for Israel's attack. But God had already dispatched His heavenly host and its captain, and He promised Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand with its king and its valiant warriors. In the next session, we will discuss how the strong and mighty Lord, how the God of Israel, mighty in battle, enabled the Israelites to destroy the impregnable city of Jericho. Brothers and sisters, God said, Indeed, ask now concerning the former days which were before you, since the day that God created man on the earth and inquired from one end of the heavens to the other. Has anything been done like this great thing, or has anything been heard like it? Has there been any other God doing such works? Who else split split a sea in an instant and stopped the flow of an overflowing river? Who else was able to open the door to heaven, send daily bread down on dry land, and make water spring from a rock? They are possible only by God. As the Bible says, To you it was shown that you might know that the Lord is God. There is no other beside Him. as the Israelites developed spiritual faith witnessing such works they went into the midst of the overflowing Jordan River without fear and they ably conquered the land of Canaan possessed by the six Gentile peoples who were great and tall these biblical works are never fabricated myths 
or legends. They were never made up out of imagination. Uh, they are undeniable facts with no fiction at all. We can confess so based on what we've experienced throughout m a m a n s history. We've experienced the shepherd's power, the dead were revived, and the blind opened their eyes, and the deaf began to hear. People sitting on the wheelchairs began to stand up and leap. The short leg became lengthened, and the twisted spine straightened up just by receiving prayer from the pulpit. People received financial blessings, and we were filled with hope for heaven. And we have witnessed such manifestations of power. Where else can we see such manifestations? Only in the Bible, but out in the world, in other churches. How could we see such amazing manifestations? I I don't mean to say other churches don't experience God's work, but the works, the kind of works that we experience here, where else can we see such things? We should never such works. And we have to be thankful that we can experience biblical works. as if we can touch it ourselves. We may confess God is great, but in face of our trial, people resort to medicine. Many Christians do so, but we don't do so because we've experienced biblical works as if we can see and hear ourselves. That's how we could have faith. As you know, pastor read the Bible after meeting God, he just believed all the biblical works to manifest such amazing works to the world, demonstrate God, and to make people believe the Bible is true, he piled up numerous hours of prayer and fasting. He himself was healed of all diseases by God. That's why he wanted to demonstrate God to the world. Just by reading the the Bible, he couldn't show Him to the world. There are many Christians who have a life of faith without faith, true faith. And Father God, I mean, see the pastor wanted them to show God to them. After he was called to be a servant of God, he was burning with the desire to do so. That's why he piled up numerous hours of day As a result, he faced many hindrances, many trials, and he passed all those situations by faith, and his power has become increasingly great. His power didn't come automatically. It came by his painstaking prayer. That's how we can witness the power. It's not that we had good faith. It's not that we had good faith and received healing from God. It's not that we had great faith. You know, we have to know that how much of an effort the Sina pastor made to show us such manifestations. And he demonstrated that God is the true God and Jesus Christ is our Savior. And he led so many people to salvation. See, the pastor, whenever he, whenever he went to overseas crusades, he always proclaimed about God the Creator, about how God is our God, and about Jesus Christ, and also the Holy Spirit and His works. And he By showing power, and he says, what I'm saying is true, will be confirmed by the works which will happen after I finish this message. You know, various diseases will be healed, and people would testify to their healing. Many people would uh, cast away their crutches. The blind people op- will open their eyes. As you see such works, You have to believe that what I'm saying, what I'm preaching is true. 
that's how he that's how he started off. And by the power, he confirmed that what he said was true. But senior pastor wasn't satisfied with this. He always he was always thirsty for greater power, more amazing works, saying that it was not enough to awaken numerous souls around the world. Why did he want to receive greater power? It's because human beings. It's difficult for human beings to have true faith without experiencing power. Convincing people that the words are true, helping them have spiritual faith of living accordingly, essentially requires power. Farmers don't work roughly, but they have a complete set of plans so that they can harvest as many grains as possible. Likewise, in cultivating humans, God works in precise ways according to His complete plans. Senior pastors longing for greater power and is satisfying the justice are all under God's plan. They are under God's providence of wrapping up the human cultivation in the end time when sins are rampant. Years ago, when senior pastor conducted a crusade in the U.S., Some pastor confessed that um, that pastor believed in the Bible and taught the Bible. He confessed that even though he had believed in and taught the Bible, he had considered the biblical works as myths. He considered that as a made-up story. But as he saw the works of power manifested at the crusade, he was impressed. Indeed, the Bible is true. Its records are true and repented. This is not made up. This, this is what truly happened. And there are many people who confess so when senior pastor conducts a overseas crusades. This was a confession from a pastor. That's right. Even if there is a even if even when people read the Bible, those works, those words are not. I mean, we need the evidence. That's why Jesus said, "You will not believe without seeing signs and wonders." Jesus knew what human beings are like. That's why He says so. And throughout His life, He manifested a works, God's works, and glorified God. And Sina Pastor did the same. Father God accomplished His work that way. You know, the Israelites crossed the Jordan, and Moses and Joshua, everything what Moses and Joshua did, Father God guaranteed them. Father God exalts His people. He doesn't just say, uh, believe me with His words, but through His people, He guarantees them through power. That's how He has the Israelites follow them so that even the Gentiles could believe in Him. Even after Moses and Joshua's times, for thousands of years, God has manifested works of power impossible by man through people who are powerful. Even today, as we witness works of God unfolding before our eyes, we can be convinced that all the works recorded in the Bible are true. uh, Particularly, we've marched on watching numerous signs and wonders performed by senior pastor, engraving such amazing works on our heart. We have to possess a sincere heart and perfect spiritual faith. How can we do so? the circumcision of our heart to cast off our sins and evil. We've watched the power. We've listened to the words of truth. But if we still hate others, if we still still stop working for God, if we don't feel under the weather, then even if you watch God's power, you still don't have true faith. Your heart is not yet circumcised. We have to engrave them in our heart and change our heart and have spiritual faith and fulfill God's will. I ask that you can boldly act in faith just as the priest marched ahead and fearlessly stepped into the flowing river carrying the ark of the Lord. I pray in our Lord's name that through your faith and deeds, God's plan and His providence for the end time will be fulfilled perfectly and His glory will 
illuminate the whole world. Hallelujah! Almighty Father God of love, please lay your hands on all brothers and sisters receiving this prayer here in attendance. Lay your hands on all the members of the brain churches and local centuries, and all the GCN TV viewers, and those who are watching via satellites, cables, and the internet all over the world, transcending space and time. Plant faith in their hearts and drive out their negative thoughts and doubts. Let all the trials and afflictions leave them. By the fire of the Holy Spirit, from head to toe, scorch their sick and affected parts, including all cells, tissues and nerves, all internal organs and intestines. Let the light of creation come upon them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, germs and viruses, and infirmities, go away. Let the light shine on them. Scorch their incurable and long-term diseases by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Burn all kinds of endemic and contagious diseases like malaria. Be cleansed and made well. All epidemic diseases such as colds and fever go away from them. Protect them from any kinds of germs and viruses and bacteria. Heal them of all kinds of cancers like stomach cancer, lung cancer, liver cancer, breast cancer, womb cancer, intestinal cancer, and all other diseases like AIDS, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, heart disease, lung disease, diabetes, women's diseases, thyroid diseases, and all inflammations. Let them be made whole from polio, stroke, arthritis, herniated discs, and many others. Let all kinds of pains disappear from them, like back pain, headache, and neuralgia. Set them free from epilepsy, autism, depression, neurosis, and all other mental diseases. Loosen them from all kinds of paralysis, and let them get up, walk, and jump. Let them regain good eyesight and restore good hearing. Let the blind open their eyes and the deaf come to hear and mute begin to speak. Heal them of after effects of all kinds of accidents. Restore their ruptured and broken bones. Restore them from burns and let the heat and burning sensation go away from them. Father, let there be no scars left. Be cleansed from all kinds of drug addictions and poisoning. Father, regenerate dead nerves, tissues and cells and bring the dead back to life. Father, please bless them to conceive a baby. Bless them to conceive a baby. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, the ruler of the air, the evil forces and their servants, go away from them. Go away, you evil spirits, unclean spirits, deceiving spirits, spirits of falsehood, separating spirits and all forces of darkness. Loosen all bonds of wickedness and darkness and go away from them. Let the light shine on them. Father God, give them strength to cry out in their prayer and empower them with the power to cast off sins and become sanctified. Let them be in good health as their soul becomes prosperous and let their family be evangelized. Protect them from all kinds of accidents and disasters and bless them to lead a successful and prosperous life in everything. Please protect your children, their home, their business and their work by the fiery hedge of the Holy Spirit with the heavenly host and angels and with your blazing eyes. Give students wisdom and understanding and fill their hearts with more passion and desire for study. Keep their hearts and minds from worldly things and plant into their hearts more fervent love for God. Bless your children and let them give glory to you in everything they do, whether they eat or drink or whatever they do. Let them confess and testify to the living God, I've met God, I've experienced God, and received His answers and blessings. Father God, thank you. Let all glory be to you alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.